So it is the morning of the 15th and basically this is when everything's supposed to be kicking off uh, with coronavirus in Vietnam. So we've decided that this morning, well this afternoon, 12 o'clock, we're going to get a bus to Nha Trang and we've booked a two bedroom apartment. Uh, so we've got our own cooking facilities, washing facilities and we're basically just going to try and hide out for a week and see what happens. Yeah, we're going to weigh up the situation and then maybe decide if we're going to go home or if we're going to carry on the journey because obviously things are starting to get very, very serious, serious now. Yeah. And uh, a trang and going to the big sea because we've got an apartment, yo. A little bit of shopping with the backpacks, what can go wrong? <laughs> Can go around. Can we wipe it and then plaster it up? Yeah. Welcome to our apartment. This is where we are spending the next two weeks because of the coronavirus and we been quarantining ourselves. So guys, we're not really filming much at the moment. Basically everything's in a bit of a pickle. Um, Just kicking off. Yeah, the virus is going crazy. UK citizens have been told not to come to Vietnam unless um, absolutely essential because you may be quarantined for two weeks on arrival but the issue is we've been here over a month and a half you know we've been in Asia for six months well, so apparently that doesn't matter I mean the place that we've checked into at the moment is nice enough um, so we're potentially just going to stay there for a little bit we've traveled back up to um, the Trang we were meant to be going to Muni but apparently here at the moment is one of the safest bets because it's really really touristy um, so yeah we're just here at the moment there's been a massive shift with everybody. Obviously the locals are really scared of us and we understand why. It's a bit of a pickle because we don't particularly want to get on an airplane and risk ourselves anyway because we're both healthy. So we're thinking maybe we'll stay here for a couple of days, maybe a couple of weeks, or maybe we'll go home. We're not entirely certain and we really didn't want to end the vlogs this way, but it may it may have to be the case. So it's scary, it's really scary times and at the same time we had another two months of travelling left to do and we, we don't want to be rushed home because this is the only chance we're going to have. You know, when we get home, we've both got to go back to jobs and careers and yeah. So we'll have a look in the next few days and we'll keep you updated as to what's going on. Um, we literally are in this apartment block right here. So we literally just walk out here and then social distance ourselves from all these people and just plonk ourselves there for the rest of the day. Real time to, to be here. I think it's a very surreal time to travel. It is, but it's also a really easy time right now to self isolate here mm. in this particular place because, like I say, we walk from there to here and back. That's and it. back, that's it. And once a week, once every two weeks, if we can help it, we'll have to do a food shop. So, yeah, we're basically going to show you what it's like living in the Trang in Vietnam for isolation. We go to the shop once a week or once every two weeks if we can and if we need any extra little bits like milk and bread we nip to our local shop but before we leave the house we need two things a mask and hand sanitizer and your reusable bag that's been given by clean and harold thanks team let's go so guys we've uh, been in the trang now for about three weeks and uh, it's crazy to see how quiet it's got obviously everyone's gone home everyone's self-isolating so the only time we leave the apartment is for exercise run on the beach or to buy you know the essential food shop so So that's it guys, as for the local shop, that's literally all we do, we walk out, come into contact with as, many, as little as people as we can, and buy some local bread, milk, egg, cheese, the essentials, that's it. So basically it's the 24th of March and um, the UK has gone on to full lockdown, went on full lockdown um, today. So basically we're trying to figure out if we should go home or stay. It's something that we've been trying to figure out for I don't know how long, but basically we're at the end of our travels, which means that we don't have a lot of money and flights are getting canceled by Freight and Centre. So we're currently looking at British Airways and other options that if they get canceled, hopefully we can get money back pretty 
dandyish and then we can rebook onto another flight. Stuck in semi isolation. On a flight that is 1695 dollars each. Three and a half thousand dollars to get home. I did it guys. Almost there, two tickets left. What? New total. It looks like the airline has increased their flight since you made a search. Usually the availability is running low. <laughs> it's gone from 3,391 to new total being 6,300. We are not going home. As you've just seen, we just tried to book our third flight. This is getting absolutely crazy. So it's currently the 26th of March and we've tried to book three flights now. We've tried to book one directly with British Airways. We've tried to book two through Skyscanner and just every time when we, we're umming and ahhing, should we, shouldn't book it because we've got a certain amount of money. The flight's home, we were just willing to pay three and a half thousand pound or three thousand pound to get home. That's a crazy amount of money, but we did it. I clicked purchase and then all of a sudden it says price are more expensive and jumped up to six grand. So, welcome to our new apartment. Same building, new apartment. So this is where we're living. This is our room, front room. This is basically where we're gonna isolate for potentially months, potentially the next five, six months. So here is our balcony washing machine and check out this view. I think that is a right view, isn't it? That's a good view. So we have um, been trying to get home and we had a flight booked for the night. We booked seven flights. Um, however, that has just basically, we've been told that we can't get to Hanoi because um, the whole country is going in lockdown for 15 days currently um, and then they're going to review it then. So we're going to go to the shops right now. So at 12 o'clock tonight on the 31st, um, yeah, it's going on lockdown. So we're going to go to the shop and buy in some food for uh, two, maybe three weeks. Yeah, and hopefully keep trying flights. But the thing is, we are in the Trang. So we are going to have to get to Ho Chi Minh or Hanoi. It takes I... about 22 hours to get to Hanoi um, and anywhere from about 7-8 hours to get to the Ho Chi Minh. I don't Minh, know so. if that class is essential so we'll have to see. We need to figure out what we're doing. Let's go to the shop. Masks on. Just walked out to the shop to get the, the bits we need like bread and eggs and milk. Basically we've had a long day of research and everything else. Uh, we've had some new news today from the government saying that the flights, uh, Qatar Airways is currently the only flight running from Vietnam are going to cancel after the 11th um, of April 2020 because I don't think there's enough um, people booking we the flights. We had actually just booked, well reserved the 11th because we are currently in the Trang we've got to try and get all the way to Ho Chi Minh and so we're currently in messages with some taxi people because, well, that's the only way to get there. Basically, the, current, <laughs> the, the country's currently in lockdown um, so we're not actually sure if we can travel um, to Ho Chi Minh City. Um, so what we've done is we've messaged a taxi driver that took us to the shop a couple of days ago for some food um, and waited for a reply from him. Uh, we've got a letter from the government that they've provided us saying that we're traveling for essential travel to the airport So hopefully that will be enough if we get stopped and um, so yeah So we, we just basically hope that everything goes to plan. So although we've been on lockdown for three weeks I feel like We've had an absolutely amazing time in this apartment and we're actually both really really sad to see it leave Well to see us leave obviously this is our beautiful bedroom. So every morning we just woke up with the sun. The sun rises like literally just here. It, it, you just see it shine straight in. It's absolutely beautiful. And then obviously we've got our gorgeous balcony. And it's been a bit strange because obviously we've never settled like this in a place before. Normally we're on the move and we're traveling, but we've got this gorgeous, gorgeous 
view, the beach, the sea. We're extremely, extremely lucky. It's crazy because it is the 7th of April and on the 11th, the 12th of April, we're either going to be back at home in the UK or we will be in a quarantine centre in Vietnam. <laughs> True. But the thing is, I think we're both a little bit sad because obviously it's coming to the end of our the end of our travels and it's not how it should have ended. You know, we should have been in the Philippines and we should have been having an amazing time. Snorkeling and scuba diving and all the things in between. Not However, about potentially getting stuck in a quarantine center. Yeah. However, we are here in Vietnam at the moment and it's beautiful here. The thing is now the next 24 hours, in my opinion, is going to be the most stressful 24 hours we've had on this whole journey. Um, because obviously we are trying to um, get from here to Ho Chi Minh. We're about six, seven different border provinces when yeah. the country's in lockdown and saying none but essential travel. So basically there is a big chance that we could get put into a quarantine centre on our way now, but we've got to do it because it's essential and we, we want to get home. Let the next 24 hours begin, guys. So we've been driving for four hours. So far, so good. Um, or another four hours to go. And then when we get to the airport, our plan is just to go and ask them when the next flight is and potentially try and jump on it if we can. We genuinely don't know what to do. You know, we were fighting this, should we stay in? And I'm trying and just wait it out there, but nobody knows how long this is going to go on for. And I don't know, it's a decision that we've, we've not really made lightly, but we just have to see what happens now, won't we? Found a room. Long story short, it took us eight hours and we managed to get all the way to Ho Chi Minh City. Our taxi man dropped us off at the airport to try and speak to someone. We didn't realise the time, obviously there's no one to speak to. So we basically just Googled a hotel and we've got in a random hotel that was closest to the airport. We checked in pretty quick, so that's quite good. So yeah, we've got no kitchen amenities, so we might have to get a grab tonight. But that's it, hopefully we're here for the next two nights and then we can get a plane either tomorrow on the 11th or the day after on the 12th. We've not had anything to eat all day, so we're gonna go get some food and we'll speak to you later on when we've got a rational mind and we know what we're doing. Speak to you soon.